Hi, 231 class. I am um, going ahead and teaching you about the pectoral ANOVA. I realize some of you might not have gotten instruction on this in your 230 class this semester, um, but it is one of the more advanced, but yet still basic, um, ways of analyzing data. And it comes in really, really handy, and you'll see it's more common than just a one-way ANOVA. Uh, so I posted my 231 materials for the NOVA. It gives some basics. The first video really kind of gives you the overview of what a factorial ANOVA is. The second video goes over the different types of results you might find given with a factorial ANOVA. And the one that I use as example is a two-way you have three F's to review and interpret. And so that second video goes over different options and how you see those in a graph. So um, definitely check those out to give you some context. And then I've got a couple of videos. One video is with the output for the data set that I'm gonna go over in this video. Um, and then this video is just showing you more of how to do it in Jamovi, although I realize that that's not something that everybody might be interested in. So I do have this data set. This data set is carrying over from a t-test. So um, in the t-test, I ha had a dependent t-test with a Facebook data set, like pre-COVID, post-COVID. Um, and then I also had the independent t-test data set, which had uh, mutual friends. And then if that person was a family member of mine, or if that person was a friend of mine. And so then I added a, another variable. If that individual lives in the same state as me, Arizona, or if the individual does not. So this lends itself to a between subjects, two way factorial ANOVA, because we've got two factors or two IBs, each with two levels. And it's a between subjects design. You are either friend or family. You either live in Arizona or you don't. Um, and then, of course, the denominator is number of mutual friends we have in common. So in this case, when we run the analyses, we're going to go to ANOVA. And now you are going to go to the ANOVA option. So the ANOVA option is giving you... Um, when you want to run ANOVA. And then you also have the ANCOVA, which is covariance. Um, ANOVA is if you have more than one dependent variable. A repeat of measures if, is if you have a completely within subjects design. So we're going to go with, and then there is those lovely non-parametric options when your data doesn't play well with you. Um, so we are going to go to ANOVA. And then we are going to put family and state as our factors, and we are going to do mutual friends as our dependent variable. Of course, we want effect size eta squared. Um, another thing that I'm going to go ahead and put in is I do not need a postdoc for family or state because those are two levels. When you have two levels, you get a significant F. You know they're different from each other. You don't know that with family and state for the interaction. So your interaction in a two by two ANOVA is comparing four different cells or four different conditions across those two factors. Um, an easy way to tell how many different conditions you have is multiplying. So if I had a two by two, I have four conditions. If I had a two by three, I have six conditions. If I have a three by three, I have nine conditions of comparison. Um, and then of course I can pick my different post talks for these. I'll just go ahead and leave us with our two key. Um, the estimated marginal means is another fun one. It goes and it gives you that information for those each one um, for the output. Um, so this would give you the marginal means for family, the marginal means for state. And then I can also go ahead and have it graph for me and give me that interaction. And so again, um, I can add that in. It's gonna give me my confidence intervals. It's gonna give me my marginal mean plots. Sorry, moving things around a little bit on ya. And then, let's see if I can scroll down. Uh, my screen cut off for ya. Um, but you can go ahead and click the table option as well. Um, and I think that's all we need. I'm just going to go ahead and check. And when you do that tables, it gives you those nice descriptives. Contrast we don't need. Model is something a little bit more advanced for us. So we're just going to keep the defaults. All right. So now 
I'm going to slowly move my viewable screen for you so you can see this output. I'll move this guy a little bit over more. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look. And again, I have a whole video that reviews this, but then this gives you, you have three Fs and a two-way factorial, main effect factor one, main effect factor two, and your interaction. Um, so this is kind of a boring, more boring finding because we've only got one significant effect of state. Um, if you did have an interaction along with main effects, your interaction is always what's going to trump it. This post hoc is irrelevant because we did not have a significant interaction. Um, this is that estimated marginal means plot that goes ahead and gives you your um, two groups for family. You can see they're overlapping, so they're not significant. You can see your two for state. Again, marginal means would be an outside of the cell block if you had watched the video with the lecture. So ignoring family, what's my mean for AZ, what's my mean mutual friends for not AZ, and then ignoring state, what's my mutual friends for family, which is one, what's my mutual friends average for friends, which is two. And then this gives you your plot for your interaction. And um, these bars do not cross over, and these are more of parallel lines, even though you see a little bit of a divergence um, for that. And we did not have a significant interaction. And then again, these, these plots right here give you that general information for your mean and your estimated standard error, which again is, um, you can interpret it like standard deviation, uh, it's standard deviation adjusted for sample size. Um, I also wanted to point out that I gave you the optional video with the tooth data, which the tooth data is kind of boring in that it's for um, animal tooth data. So if you did want to pull that up though, in Jamovi, you go to open and you go to data library and it's tooth growth. And they even call it an uninspiring ANOVA set. So that's something that you can um, explore if you want to and follow along with that video. All right, so that was just the general overview for Factorial ANOVA. Again, contact me if you have any questions and definitely watch the output video so you can understand and review more of this output. Have a great week.